Chances are you use ductile iron pipe every day and don't even know it. The underground pipes that transport a city's drinking water are cast from ductile iron. So are the sewer pipes that take away household waste. Ductile iron is more flexible than ordinary gray iron. Under pressure, it will bend before it breaks. Ductile iron pipes are made of 90% recycled metal and have a lifespan of hundreds of years. Production begins in the pipe factory's scrapyard. These old cars are on their way to a shredder that chews them up into little bits. The factory sorts the bits by material. It discards the plastic, sells the aluminum and copper, but keeps the steel and iron. The factory also gets scrap steel from demolished buildings and other sources. The shredded metal is analyzed by its chemical composition and sorted accordingly. A crane operator uses an industrial magnet to gather precise amounts of steel and iron. The shredded metals then go into a blast furnace fueled by coke, a form of coal. At 2500 degrees Fahrenheit, the iron and steel liquefy while impurities are carried away. Workers then add magnesium. This turns the metal from ordinary gray iron into stronger, more flexible ductile iron. The molten iron travels down a trough into a casting machine. It enters a spinning mold where centrifugal force spreads the iron against the mold walls. A cooling system chills the walls and the iron solidifies within seconds. Then, an extractor pulls out a 20-foot long cast iron pipe, the standard industry length. Before each casting, workers insert a round form called a core into one end of the pipe mold. The molten iron fills the void between the core and mold, forming a flared edge called a bell. The core also seals off that end of the mold, preventing molten iron from flying out during casting. When it's time to connect the pipes, installers will fit the bell of one pipe over the straight end of another. A rubber gasket seals the link together. The casting machine can make pipes of different diameters by changing the size of the mold inside. After the pipe is extracted, Inspectors weigh it and measure the wall thickness to be sure everything meets specifications. Then, on the bell end, they remove the core. Since it's made of sand and plastic resin, it simply disintegrates. This factory makes pipes in several diameters. But regardless of size, the casting process is always the same. It just takes less time with smaller pipes because they harden faster. A freshly cast pipe is around 1500 degrees Fahrenheit, but it cools quickly after leaving the mold. Such rapid cooling makes the iron brittle, so the pipe goes directly into a gas-fired annealing furnace that reheats it to 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. This alters the internal structure of the iron, making it strong and flexible. The pipe then runs through a cooling chamber that showers it in cold water. To prevent the iron from corroding, the inside gets sprayed with cement, building up a lining an eighth of an inch thick. Then, the pipe is spun for a few seconds to smooth out the cement. The entire pipe is painted inside and out. This seals the surface, enabling the cement to cure over the next 24 hours. It also provides some extra rust protection. Finally, a robot paints a stripe around the straight end of each pipe. This is a depth guideline, so installation crews know when they've inserted the straight end of one pipe as far as it can go into the bell end of another.